Tom Wilson is facing a fairly lengthy suspension. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. I would love to talk Capitals hockey with you one on one, and we can do that on subtext. Just check the show description for more details. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase. So, in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about some bad news uh, surrounding the Capitals and one player in particular, Tom Wilson, as he is facing a potentially lengthy suspension. Not an ideal situation as this Capitals team is still in the hunt for a playoff spot. We'll talk about that. A little bit later, we will talk about Brian McClellan's initial thoughts on Spencer Carberry. I assume that he loved everything about Spencer Carberry, Spencer Carberry, but there's some new information out lately from Elliot Friedman that said there were some reservations that uh, Mac had on the way Carberry was going to be the head coach. And then we'll talk about Nick Backstrom missing from the team photo and what is behind that. But just to get it going here, the big news, the biggest news, I guess I would say, is that Tom Wilson is facing what could potentially be a lengthy suspension. Uh, not an ideal situation for a Capitals team that is already missing TJ Oshie, Alexei Protus, and, you know, uh, Tom Wilson is a key ingredient to, uh, to the Capitals' success, uh, the physical presence, the leadership, the goal scorer, so to be minus him for any lengthy period of time would not be ideal. Rumors out there that it could be more than five games. Uh, so a tough news and a tough break for Tom Wilson and the Capitals. Tell me if you've heard this before, but Tom Wilson was offered an in-person hearing for a high sticking call on Noah Gregor. So tell me, is that have you heard that before? Uh, Tom Wilson in trouble with, you know, doing this play or getting in a fight. Oh, yes, I've heard that quite often. It's been quite some time, but Tom Wilson is no stranger to getting in trouble, shall we say. Because of the fact that Wilson is a repeat offender, he may face a lengthy suspension when the Capitals need him the most. The Capitals are already minus TJ Oshie and Alexei Protus. So to be minus him is definitely not optimal. Uh, if things go off the rails here and they don't have Tom Wilson and they don't, you know, have TJ Oshie or Alexei Protus, it's going to be tough. Uh, the Capitals are going to have to find a way to overcome. And ultimately, it doesn't come to quite that. The Capitals are fighting for their playoff lives and missing one of their key pieces. And Wilson is not optimal. Potentially, he could miss five plus games. It is what is said here, just based on the fact of the nature of the hit and the fact that he is a repeat offender. The high stick came in the third period as Wilson was battling with Gregor along the boards. After an initial hit, he took an extra swing with his stick, hitting Gregor in the head. He received a double minor on the play. Listen, Tom Wilson is the kind of guy that plays with a lot of emotion. He doesn't mail it in. Uh, sometimes I don't think he can ultimately contain himself. This was one of those situations. He was battling. It was a tough game. The Capitals were getting their butts handed to him. He wanted to find a way to, to get back into it and, and you know try to help boost his team as best as he possibly could. Like I said, Wilson is no stranger to being suspended, but it has been some time since he's seen the long, uh, the long arm of the NHL law. Listen, Wilson has a reputation. Caps fans love him, but the rest of the league hates him. But to be clear here that if, you know, for some reason he wanted to move on to another team, there's not another one of the 31 other teams out there that would not love 
Wilson on their team. They wouldn't be buying his jersey. They wouldn't be saying, oh, my God, what a coup for our team. Uh, the only reason that they don't like Tom Wilson is for the very fact of his physical brand of hockey, kind of unapologetic approach to playing the game and a Swiss army knife. You know, you've seen players try to replicate or there's players that I should say are similar to Tom Wilson's style of game, but not a true apple for apples comparison. Uh, see Ryan Reeves, Maroon, those kind of players that are essentially junkyard dogs without a really high skill set. The last suspension Wilson faced was in 2021. But he has quite a reputation in the NHL. The worst for Wilson was a 20-game suspension in 2018. Yes, the first few years for him in the league were not good for him, uh, as he was a lot more physical back then. In one of the recent interviews, I guess not super recent, it was a couple months ago, he was on Mike Vogel's podcast. And he said that he doesn't want to engage with fights anymore uh, just so some young NHL player can make a name for themselves. He goes, what's in it for me? You know, that's time that I'm in the penalty box, not helping my team contribute to scoring goals. I don't need to fight some fourth line guy that's trying to make a name for himself. But there are still certain intrinsic uh, inner qualities in him that make him that physical guy, that tough guy. And sometimes it just spills over the top. Wilson has been a key contributor on the Caps and the Caps will miss his physicality, leadership, and goal-scoring touch. Wilson has points in three straight games. And this Capitals team that is fighting for offensive power, uh, you know, up and down, not just from certain players, they need his goal-scoring touch. They need the points that he is generating. The Capitals are at a crucial point of the season, and missing Wilson for a lengthy period of time could be curtains on the Capitals' season. Uh, listen, there is not a lot of time to, to mess around here. The Caps are one point out of a playoff spot with only 14 games left in the regular season. So again, not an ideal situation. Uh, I, I, you know, I'd be willing to bet that Tom Wilson wishes he probably didn't do that, but it was a tough game for the Caps. If you watched it, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs really worked over the Caps. And it was one of those moments where they were probably chipping back and forth and probably saying some words that to bear not repeating on a podcast and, you know, emotions spill over. It's just the nature of being human. But in any event, the Capitals will have to prepare for a, a potential situation, not having Tom Wilson on the team. Now, the player that I'm going to list is not, again, you know, a comparable in a lot of different ways, but this would be a, definitely a door open for a guy like Ethan Frank, who we've spoke about for the longest time, kind of opposite ends of the spectrum as far as physical stature is concerned and probably the style of play, uh, but both can score goals on a fairly regular basis, or at least Frank can in the AHL. I guess it would remain to be seen what kind of skill set that he has in the NHL. The one thing advantage that he would have over Wilson uh, is that he's very quick. Uh, the Capitals would be markedly quicker with Ethan Frank on the team. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, making the most of your opportunities. And if you are an everyday of the show, you know, I talk about that all the time that, you know, it's too bad this guy got injured or, you know, Nick Backstrom had to step away from hockey. But think of the, you know, what that meant for Connor McMichael. Think what, you know, Kuznetsov going in the players assistance program meant for Scarbosa. So those kind of things that it sometimes you don't see it for what it is at the time. And it's unfortunate you know, the Backstrom, the Koozie thing, but it, you know, lent itself to being an opportunity for a young guy to, to finally get his opportunity. So ultimately uh, we hope that, you know, Tom Wilson doesn't miss a whole lot of time as there's not a whole lot of games left to be played in the regular season, but those are part of the perils of being a tough guy and, and kind of leaning with emotion uh, that you get yourself in those kind of positions. All right, so straight ahead here, we will talk about Max initial thoughts. Brian McClellan, the GM of the Capitals, we all think that he was totally in love with Spencer Carberry and, and was head over heels, but he had some reservations. What were those reservations? I'll discuss coming up.
You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last-minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So one of the things that's frustrating for me is that when my favorite band comes to town or my favorite sports team's playing, and maybe I waited too long to buy tickets, and I'm getting frustrated, take the frustration out of buying tickets with Game Time. They make it so easy. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So if we kind of recollect back to when Peter Laviolette and the Capitals parted ways, you know, people, some people said it was Laviolette, some people said it was the Capitals, that, you know, it was a mutual thing, that they wanted to part ways. And I think that, you know, if we kind of think back, I think that Peter Laviolette knew that, you know, he didn't want have a home here that uh, his thoughts and his play style didn't mesh with the Capitals. And maybe he just saw the writing on the wall that his days were numbered. So in any event, that ushered in a whole new era for the Capitals as they went in kind of a, a drastically different direction, going with a young head coach, the youngest in the NHL, a guy that has a rapport with a lot of the younger players since he uh, was a coach with the Stingrays, also the Hershey Bears, uh, also had a stint with the Providence Bruins, um, you know, and of course what he did for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So this guy has a long track record in the ECHL, AHL, and NHL um, and has killed it pretty much at every stop along the way. So it seemed like a hand in glove, a no-brainer that Spencer Carberry would be the perfect fit for this team that wants to get younger and faster and yet still compete for a Stanley Cup. So uh, was it all love? Was it all a total acceptance by Brian McClellan uh, on Spencer Carberry? But the more we're hearing about that, not necessarily the case. Uh, so just taking a look um, and what the, what the history is here. The hiring of Spencer Carberry after the Caps parted ways uh, seemed like a perfect situation, but in a recent 32 Thoughts column, Elliot Friedman said that when he had a conversation with McClellan at the recent GM meetings in Florida, that he had some differences with the way Carberry wanted his team to play defensively. And I'll talk about it here, what he's talking about in particular. But, and if you are an everyday of the show, you know, I've spoke about earlier that there was some disjointedness uh, it didn't seem like the Capitals were in lockstep and, you know, they were still trying to learn uh, Spencer Carberry systems well into the season. As it turns out, the systems were quite a bit different. Elliot Freeman said the Capitals play a lot of defense zone man to man. And the coach said that he has the philosophy during the interview process. McClellan didn't like the idea, but the organization knew Carberry and wanted to hire him and decided that he was going wasn't going to be the deal breaker. So that was the difference. The Capitals play a lot of defensive zone man to man. And uh, apparently Brian McClellan was not in love with that style of defensive play, um, but he was willing to, to look past it because I think that they thought that, you know, they had a truly dynamic head coach in Spencer Carberry and, you know, a guy that's young, that is finally going to be the guy to bring along the youth of the team. So they were willing to look past it. I think the Caps had their eyes on Carberry for a while and were willing to accept his philosophies regardless if they didn't agree. Max said in the Friedman article, I talked about that with our staff. Max said, if you're going to hire a coach, you have to let him coach 
the way that he wants to coach. And I think that is a good idea. I think that, you know, if Brian McClellan said, you know, we're going to hire you, but I want you to coach a way that I don't think that you see is fit. And I don't think that would be a good position. I don't think the optics for that would look good. I think that that would set Spencer Carberry off on the wrong foot. And I think that that would ultimately alienate the general manager from the head coach. So a good advice from McClellan that uh, ultimately they were willing to accept Spencer Carberry, despite the fact that they necessarily didn't see eye to eye with how Spencer Carberry wanted the defense to play. That would explain a lot of the disjointed play from the Capitals earlier on in the season. During the LaViolette's tenure, it was more of a mixture between man-to-man and zone. The Caps have often been generalized as being slow, and Carberry wanted to address that by picking up the pace. His philosophy on man-to-man is it extinguishes offensive threats quickly. The style of play often leads to the opponent turning over the puck more often. There's been good and bad in this style of play. When it's dialed in, it limits your opponent's opportunities. When it's reared its ugly head, it's led to the Capitals turning over the puck and spending too much time in their own end. And we've seen that. And that was the assessment here of, you know, Elliot Friedman. And that was the assessment of Brian McClellan and ultimately why uh, they weren't in love with that philosophy. And, and, you know, I think that there's been more cohesiveness as time has gone on here. The players have bought into the system, but it was and probably was a bit foreign to a lot of the guys that have been on the team for a while that, you know, this is quite a bit different than the way the old guy did it here, uh, but they've totally bought into the system here as of late. That was the slow learning curve I spoke about in the beginning of the season. Is it the right system? I think it's something that can be tweaked in the off season. And I I say that with, you know, it's going to depend on what happens with the team this season. You know, I think that there will be a moment for Spencer Carberry and his coaches to reflect, you know, this worked, that didn't work, and maybe tweak it. Or maybe they're just staunch and will dig their, their heels in and say, that's the way we play hockey They're just going to have to learn. I think that, you know, it would be a good mixture of that, you know, not to just be too stubborn and say that Spencer Carberry hockey, you better get used to it. Uh, That if for some reason it didn't work, that they would be willing to modify it. But all things considered, Brian McClellan appears to like the job that Spencer is doing. He's doing a good job. You look at the roster at the beginning of the year. We had Baxter and Kuznetsov. I think it's shifted. It's evolved into all of a sudden we have Lop here uh, last night at first line center, Dylan Strom second, Connor McMichael, however you want to slot those guys in. It's a different looking team and it's played well since the break. And I've talked about it. And again, if you are an every day or the show, you know, I've talked about that this team needs to get younger. It's, you know, nothing too foreign to people that know the team rather well, that it is one of the older teams or was, it's still up there. One of the older teams roster wise in the NHL that they have this young talent. That's obviously really good as the bears won a Calder cup last year and very well could be on the way to, you know, making a push into the playoffs. And dare I say a Calder cup this year, why not take a look at it? Why not totally buy in, on Hendrick Slop here. Why not, you know, go all in on Connor McMichael and some of these young players? I think it's paid off really well for the Capitals as Hendrick Slop here has been one of the biggest contributors as of late on the Capitals and Connor McMichael taking on a lot bigger of a role in Nick Backstrom's absence is what I'm going to dub it as right now. We don't know what the future holds, but for right now, Nick Backstrom's absence from the team. Connor McMichael has taken to that like a fish to water, and I think that it was an ideal situation. Uh, so that that's where the Capitals are at. Sometimes, you know, you, you hire a coach and you know, yeah. for example, the Flyers, when they hired Tortorella, they had to know that he is a bit prone to being you know, a little emotional, but they they hired him regardless. It's not like, well, we're not going to go with Tortorella because he gets a little crazy behind the bench. Or, you know, you could say the same thing about Wah you know, for the Islanders, guys that are a little bit over the top. So you have to accept the good and the bad and uh, see what your options are. I, I, I honestly think that if the Capitals had someone else better behind door number two, they probably would have gone with him. But I think that Spencer Carberry was... Uh, a wise decision. You know, I think back to the other guys that were being circulated, you know, Helpern, that would have been another option as well. He was one of the front runners in my mind as well. But all things considered, I like Spencer Carberry's job. And to extinguish any of the thoughts out there that if for some reason the Capitals don't make it to uh, the playoffs this year that, you know, maybe they should part ways with Spencer Carberry. 
quite the contrary. One heck of a coach. Uh, it's just good. It's a work in progress. And it's also been noted by some of the bigger names within the NHL. Some of the big, big names in the NHL have said that Carberry should be up for the Jack Adams Award consideration for coach of the year. I would definitely say he's worthy of it. All things considered, I don't know how the Capitals will finish the season. The one thing I know is that they're in a better position than when they started the season. Uh, again, uh, it's it, it's a tough thing right now. There's a bit of uncertainty. How long, how much time is TJ Oshie going to be missing? How much time is Alexei Protus going to be missing? How long is Tom Wilson potentially going to be suspended for? Those things you know, this hard push towards the end of the season could all evaporate, you know, say if Oshi misses a lot of time or say Wilson misses five plus games, those could be game changing and season changing moments. All right. So coming up here after the break, we will talk about how Nick Backstrom was missing from the team photo and ultimately what was behind that and how there was a space left next to Alex Ovechkin, the captain, the significance of that, and is there any hope that we see Nick Backstrom this season or ever? I'll discuss straight ahead. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die live at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So a change for the Capitals this season that, uh, you know, I kind of saw coming and, and, you know, still kind of caught me by surprise was that when Nick Backstrom stepped away from hockey indefinitely and what that means for the long term, is there any chance that we see Nick Backstrom on the ice this season? Is there any chance that we see him take to the rink, the ice in a, you know, a game activity ever again, whether it's this season or ever, um, there's a lot of questions. And ultimately I would be the most surprised if we ever see uh, Nick Backstrom put on a Capitals Jersey and take to the ice, it would just be very surprising, but uh, all things considered, the Capitals are missing a big voice on the team. Uh, and it was an interesting moment today as it was the team photo and there was a gap uh, next to Alex Ovechkin to potentially edit in the photo of Nick Backstrom as he was not with the team uh, at that time. But the significance of Backstrom and uh, all of that is kind of coming into focus. Is there a chance Nick Backstrom makes a return at some point? The Caps took a, a team photo but left a space available where they can edit in his photo. Backstrom took an indefinite leave from the Capitals but has not formally retired He's still a huge piece on the Capitals, if not on the ice, in the locker room when he's available. He's a trusted guy. He is a guy that is loved by all of his teammates. I don't think that there's probably anyone in the Capitals locker room or probably anywhere in the NHL that has a negative thing to say about Nick Backstrom, a quiet guy, a humble guy, uh, but one heck of a hockey player. He was one of the best guys out there you could find, Ovechkin told reporters in Edmonton last week. It doesn't matter what position you are. He could begin the play so well. He was strong on the puck. He was one of the best. And I've said this time and time again that I don't think that Alex Ovechkin would be the player that he is today if he didn't have Nick Backstrom. You saw Alex Ovechkin struggles with different centers throughout the season. He found his way after the All-Star break, but I think it's a safe thing to say. And I think that Nick Backstrom would say it. I think Alex Ovechkin would say it, that those two work together very well. They both were lucky in a lot of ways, you know, but Nick Backstrom was the humble guy that was just like, didn't want any of the limelight, didn't want any of the accolades. He just, you know, pushed all of that in Ovechkin's direction and, and Ovechkin was happy to soak it all in. 
But at the end of the day, I think that Ovi knows that, you know, the big role that Backstrom played. Backstrom has not skated with a team and has only taken it to the ice in a track suit, you know, separately on his own, probably to see where he's at with that hip, just to test things out. But a tough moment for uh, a lot of the guys, uh, you know, if you take a look at Tom Wilson, when he was a young guy on the team, he affectionately referred to Nick Backstrom as dad. Uh, he had that kind of role on the team as kind of this, you know, fatherly, mature figure that's been in the league for a long time. So definitely left a void in the Capitals locker room. I am sure of it. We were hopeful that he would be able to recover, but the hip hasn't responded to the procedure in ways that, you know, we had hoped or he had hoped or the team had hoped, of course. Uh, and it was one of those long shots. And, you know, he had the right attitude the whole time. I remember you know, he missed a bunch of the season, then last season that is, and then he came back sooner than anyone had thought. And we thought, wow, this is going to be a game changer. And at the end of the season, it was like our own breakdown day. Brian McClellan was asked about it. He's like, listen, there's not a whole lot of favorable results of people making a return from this. It's a wait and see thing. We'll wait and see. And then, you know, uh, Brian McClellan adjusted his attitude as Nick Backstrom played hockey over in Sweden in a competitive league. We're not talking like a beer league league. It was a legitimate league over in Sweden and was playing well, all things considered. And, uh, you know, Mac changed his tune and said, you know, he's looking pretty good. You know, we'll see what happens here. But as it turns out, that hip was not as good uh, that De Backstrom had hoped for. And I mean, the, I don't ever want to to talk about Backstrom in a negative light. He had to do what he had to do to, you know, live his day-to-day -day life. You know, he said he had a hard time playing with his kids. He had a hard time tying his shoes. He had to do what was right for Nick Backstrom, the man, not the hockey player. So a uh, tough thing for the Capitals as they are out, you know, and it's been a long time since November without a key player like him on the ice you got to think the capitals would be in a lot better position had they had you know nick backstrom from a couple of years ago when he was still in top form uh leading the team uh you know his leadership qualities and also serving up those sweet passes to alex ovechkin listen i want to thank you for joining me on this edition of locked on capitals your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are ultimately what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Lockdown's 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.